From Los Angeles, California, we're the Mad Scientist Party Hour. Hello there, friends! Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft. Joined by a man who has stripped himself of his pants and underwear and is currently dipping his boner in the batter to turn it into a corn dog. That's Jeff Clark. Corn dick. Sup. And beaming to us from the nether realm, the bearded reanimated corpse of a booger eating maniac known as Shuddy Boy. Yo. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Ladies, fucking jiggle your tits and pull on your nips. We're back. Fellas, you can do that too. I can pull on my tits, or jiggle my tits and pull on my nips. I also can. I hate doing it though. Kevin, it's slightly offensive hearing you talk about that kind of stuff when you're the skinniest guy in this podcast, all right? Don't fucking fiend fat guy problems, all right? You don't really have them. Fiend? I think I used that right. I didn't. <laughs> Fuck. I, Google I, it. I believe Google you mean, I think I did. I think you mean Fain. He does mean Fain. Ah. Oh. But I mean, look. You see if where you I'm go going by, with that, If you go by titty meat ratio, I might have you guys beat. Why don't we all show them right now and then let you two be the judge. I am not. Sh- I am not pulling my titties out on the internet. <laughs> I don't want to cause any unnecessary boners. Yeah, we might get flagged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need YouTube fucking taking down this this episode. <laughs> Looking like fucking Rick Ross by the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better about it if I had like a sick chain. I'm Seriously. sure there's going to be a lot of that coughing this weekend. Why, do you have COVID? No. Dom and I are going on that road trip, and I'm going to plan on smoking a lot of marijuana. <laughs> it's exciting. Testing the boundaries of what Ohio will let me get away with. Be careful uh, transporting that weed across state lines. That's a conservative state, isn't it? Yeah, I think Ohio is pretty non-chill. I think Ohio. it's a swing state, right? It's like Pennsylvania. Could be it could be conservative. I don't know how how it's working right now. No, nope, yeah. it is. It's a Republican state. Yeah, they're gonna take your freedoms away for having a plant in your pocket, Shuddy. Be careful. At least they're hosting a toy con. That's a step in the liberal direction, right? I guess. <laughs> I Do you know. have any specific toys you're looking to buy, Shuddy? Honestly, no. Because Have you like looked at the vendor list like Kevin would look at the 626 Night Market vendor list? Yes, but a lot of the I don't know a lot of the the vendors that are going to be there from them not being local. I mean, Attorney of Dreams is going to be there, which is I've heard you mention them, which I'm really fucking stoked for. Uh that's where Dom and I took our old dude road trip to last year was their store in Maryland. Um but you know, a lot of surprisingly, uh, my collection is pretty full. God, I'm very say. surprised by that. Um, Did and, you add a couple of things? And the no, there's nothing. The I the actually I did add some things. They just haven't come out of the packaging yet. Hold on, I'll go grab them. Oh man, we're gonna get a Wait, shuddy boy unboxing. Those green like monster castle fronts aren't new. Those feel very new. No, I think I've seen those. But now that those things are there, like he could probably stuff a couple toys on top of them. I see like a tiki mug over there. He could stuff a figure in that. Yeah, can you put a little toy in like the fucking castle front eyeballs? Yeah, you need like a He-Man Russian nesting doll so it's like eight toys but only occupies the space of one toy. Um, So when they started re-releasing the Masters of the Universe toys, they also did... <laughs> wwe versions 
Uh, oh, I got, yeah. I got to get those. So, well, I have almost all of them. <laughs> I do. I have. I'm missing. I'm all, so basically, what the problem I'm having with my collection right now is the only thing, only pieces that I'm missing from the toy lines are the stuff that I deem too expensive. What's okay? What's the price point at which you tap out at? One fifty and up. That's fair. So that's a it's a high limit. Well, I mean, I there it's investments, few, Kevin. There there are a few that I've paid that sure. much for, and that's because I was able to get them for that versus what they're really selling for. Oh, value! So it's not yeah. a hard and fast rule. It's not a hard and fast rule. So I don't have anything specific I'm looking for. It's like Jeff with it's pizza port. Going to be. Like every time Dom and I have gone to a toy show, fly by the seat of my pants and go like a bat out of hell until I'm out of my allotted money. Which is going to be tough because it's an entire three days. So I, there's part of me that likes to buy everything immediately. So that way somebody else doesn't get it before I finally decide to. I like that yeah. strategy. But... That means Friday morning, two hours in, I'll be out of money if I operate like that. Yeah. Right. Well, I went but to... anyway, back to the toys that I... All right, back to more toys. Kevin. Shut the fuck up, Kevin. Go ahead. Continue, Shuddy. These wrestling figures, Ric Flair, Jeff, Shuddy's Punk talking. Man, and Hollywood Hogan. Wait, those are... But... Those are He-Man inspired? They're they're the same style as the He-Man figures. These are just filling the collection. I I have their out of reach, but I have several that are... I'll go get those. Yeah. Might as well. What are we... Why not? Fuck it. Yeah. Everybody, like, the rundown is out the window. We're just going to watch Shotty Boy play with toys today. Do you... Wait a second. This is always a mystery to me. Do you have a rundown? Because I've never been presented a rundown by you, never once. I mean, I used to type them up and print them out every show, but I think I stopped somewhere in the three hundreds. Right, maybe All in right. the two hundreds. I heard talk of rundowns. Uh, I put notes in my phone. Yeah, that was so. Rundowns was one of the very first tasks Kevin charged me with doing when I joined the podcast, and then we never followed them, so I stopped putting them together. And just let Kevin take the reins. Uh, but like here, here's a Sergeant Slaughter that looks like man at arms. Shuddy, shuddy, shuddy. Sergeant, Sergeant Slaughter is fucking awesome. Well, he was a bit problematic there for a bit. Why, was he a rapist? No. During uh, Desert Storm, he sided with the Iraqis. And that was his, that was his gimmick. That was his like heel turn? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. During the live tour. <laughs> <laughs> like he came out with an Iraqi type guy waving Iraq flags, taunting while Desert Storm was happening. Dude, <laughs> WWF used to be so lit. Man. <laughs> really? Vince McMahon was having like divas like do abortions in ring. Yeah, dude. They were pretty much. They would not fucking shy away from any issue. Man. And matter of fact, they would lean into all of them. I guess fucking Vince McMahon got too distracted by side pussy to to be edgy anymore. No, what happened is they wanted to be more mainstream. So they went PG-13 instead of R. Oh, they went woke. Literally all the moves are geared towards him making more money. That's it. That's that's the, yeah, he would that, he does not need to do a family friendly entertainment. He just does it because there's more money into it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, I when, guess going, going woke doesn't always equate to going broke. Just look at Vince McMahon. So that what woke happened motherfucker. was in, in the, <laughs> the yeah, early and mid nineties, <laughs> WWE was having a real tough time financially. So that's why they went edgy is to make money then. And then when it got popular, they took the edginess out of it. I miss when The Rock was calling people hermaphrodites. Like, uh, John Cena's finisher used to be called the uh, FU. And then they changed it to the PU? To the attitude adjustment. Oh, man. That's, is that, that's what they renamed his finisher? Yeah. 
They changed uh, it. They changed it to the pronoun checker. <laughs> uh, there was a move called the STFU that's just now called the STF. Did John Cena Wait. does give off mad PC principal vibes, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> if they ever made a live action South Park, John Cena should definitely play PC principal. I mean, they would put back in the day. They would put two divas in the ring and the match would be strictly to rip each other's clothes off. Yeah. Nice. I <laughs> like, thought though it, it was more of so, a response in the like WCW cuz WCW like naturally went a little edgier with their NWO shit so like WWF had yeah, to keep had up to. so they were just like fuck it we're going to go harder we're going to go even edgier and that's what they countered with. And then by the end of the Attitude Era, they were able to swallow ECW and WCW whole. Yeah, they did it so well. They took up their only two competitors. They just bought them out. <laughs> Drank their milkshake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For real. He motherfucker went Daniel Plainview out there. Well, Shuddy, um, I went to a convention myself over the weekend. Oh. Speaking of your little toy Con trip. off. Well, well, fucking MSPH Con Air. Let's talk about it, guys. <laughs> Dude, I had tell me more. I had no idea this thing was even happening. So like, this was this was something I bought tickets to. Uh, maybe like seven or eight months ago or something like that, and then completely forgot it existed. And it was just with so much going on, you know, flying to Florida w- one weekend for a memorial, then flying to New Orleans, and then just you know breaking my thumb, doctor visits. All this shit, I was like, man, I'm really just looking forward to a weekend where I can just chill out and do nothing. And then I look in my Google calendar and I see this thing and I'm like, ah, fuck! I have to go to a horror convention! Well, you didn't have to go. I didn't, but it sounded fun, so I chose to. Wait, Tom is going to a horror convention the weekend after we get back. We go to PowerCon. Wow. So is he just going to buy ecstasy once for an, enough for both cons or is he going to get it twice? <laughs> um, Neither hey, of did, us did, planned to bring ecstasy. That might need to. Hmm. Well, if there's anything that will make a con more fun, it'll be yeah. some Molly or ecstasy. Is there, Kevin, is there a fleshlight booth? I want to play with some of those toys right now. Did you uh, did Carl end up going? I know she was in the fence. Yeah, she ended up going. Okay. Did she enjoy HorrorCon as much as you? She liked it more than the anime con. So hmm. it was it was in Long Beach. And yeah, you motherfuckers came to Long Beach to even visit me. Well, uh, you know, we, we only visit like true Long Beach residents. What? Not you, not you, you posers. Co- you cocksucker. But that that morning was the tenth day after getting hit with that pitch, and they told me at ten, like on the tenth day, go get your stitches out. So I called this this urgent care in Hollywood that I've gone to a bunch of times. This is this is the place that Tully from the Ella Show has also gone to, and everything we go in there for, they're like, um, yeah, just stop, stop having, having gay sex. Yeah, stop having gay sex. And like, what? I, my head hurts. Yeah, stop having gay sex. All right. What's what's guess number two on what could be causing this? So I hadn't been there in a while, and I so I called them up just to make sure that this is something that could happen. I'm like, hey, I, I have stitches that have to come out, and can I come to you for this service? And they were like, well, I think so, but um, it, it depends on if the doctor is in, the doctor that can do it is in that day. And I was like, well... It's only a couple days out. Have you made the schedule? Like, does this doctor know if he's working on Saturday? And they're like, I don't know. You'll just have to show up on the day of. And I was like, fucking cool. USA, USA. Uh, uh, why? Well, I, um, I also had to change my health insurance. Can you tell me if you guys take it? And she was like, no. I was like, what the fuck? What? Why? She's like, oh, we can't do it over the phone. So... You can't just okay. say if you accept this, like I have XYZ healthcare. You can't say yes or no that you accept that. No, that, over the phone. That nope. is insane. So she There's was a like, chance they're pranking you. She was like, not pranking no. you, but you just got just, the worst. She just didn't, it sounds like she just didn't want to do anything. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just happened to call when someone just didn't was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not really doing my job today. 
I'm quitting. This is my last day. Fuck, yeah, I'm she was mail watching it in. something on her phone that you interrupted, and she's yeah. just doing everything <laughs> to get you off the phone as quickly as possible. Can I tell you if I'll take your insurance? Uh, no. No, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hmm, let me see. What country do you live in? America. Oh, yeah. We're not helping you at, at all. <laughs> no. Go fuck yourself. That's Sorry, what you get for not being born. You behind the Mexicans in line. That's what you get for, for not being born in Canada or pretty much anywhere else in the, in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for not following the metric system, you son of a bitch. So uh, they were pretty much just like, yeah, to find out if we take your insurance and if a doctor can help you, you'll just have to come in and roll the dice. And I was like, okay, you understand that they have to come out that day. So if you don't take my insurance and you can't help me, I'm going to just have to keep going to different urgent cares. And with Los Angeles traffic, I really only have a finite number of places I can visit before I'm just fucking shit out of luck. Like, you realize I'm just, I'm somebody who needs medical attention and you're fucking jerking me off. And they're just like, yeah, sorry. Did so, you I mean, call someplace else? Did you tell them about Horicon? <laughs> Well, I just showed up on the day. I went there when they opened, and she was like, the the woman behind the counter was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know if uh, the doctor's not here yet, so you can like hang out and wait." And I'm just like, "Oh, motherfucker!" I'm like, "All right, well, at least the guy is coming in." So I waited. The guy showed up. They put me in a waiting room. I waited like another hour in there, and then I swear to Christ, Ben Carson walks in. This fucking guy looked and sounded like Ben Carson. And, like, in my head, like, sure, if, if, if you support his political ideals, sure. Like, but honestly, even if you do support that guy's ideals, would you let him perform brain surgery on you? Like, just hearing that guy say one sentence, I'd be like, maybe we should wait a few hours for your Oxycontins to wear off. Like, you seem a little bit sleepy. Maybe fucking take a nap. So this guy walks in, and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh my God, I'm about to fucking get medical care from Ben Carson. And this guy could not <laughs> answer a fucking direct question from me. It like, doesn't sound like anyone there can answer a direct question. I mean, again, it's fucking America, so I'm not, I'm not like surprised, but it's, st- it's still shocking when it happens. It's like, Jesus Christ, I can't, like, I wouldn't expect healthcare treatment this bad in fucking Ethiopia, but here we are. But like, the, the, so do they. Do they diagnose your thumb with monkeypox or what? He did tell me to stop having gay sex. Like maybe you should <laughs> stop shoving your thumb up the anuses of men. Like I will like never you're... stop doing that, sir. Never. Looks like your thumb has schlong COVID. <laughs> yeah. So like the guy comes in and he Parker. he looks at my thumb and he he gets like the the nurse comes in with tweezers and scissors and stuff to cut the stitches out and he's like. He's like, man, you should have come in days ago. And I was like, well, the ER told me on day 10, go get the stitches out. And he's like, yeah, they should have told you something different. I'm like, ah, <laughs> fucking all right, cool, all right. Like, like eight or nine days would probably have been better. <laughs> yeah. So he was, he's like, he's sitting there trying to grab a hold of the stitches with his tweezers, and he keeps missing. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm a righty. I could take those tweezers from you with my good left hand and get it on the first try. <laughs> What the fuck is happening right now? And then he, he like he gives up because there's five stitches and the ones on the top and bottom are like being swallowed by my thumb currently. And he's like, let's just go to one of the easy ones. So he goes to the one of the ones in the middle. Like really digs like he can't get the scissors under it. So he has to like dig them into my skin and then cuts it. And like it. It hurt like a motherfucker, and he pulls the stitch out, and my thumb just starts gushing blood all over the place. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, cool. Only four more of those to do. (laughs) I like how the only thing this fucking urgent care was clear and direct on was that you came in at the wrong time. Yeah. (laughs) So he he does get them all out, but, like, you know, it, it was a struggle, and it's still a relatively fresh wound. So it's bleeding... It looks fucking like mangled hamburger meat. And then I'm just asking the guy, I'm like, okay, so the stitches are out now. What's my process from here? You know, should I start doing exercises to, you know, wiggle my thumb and get some mobility back? Because as of right now, I can, 
like this is about as far as I can bend my other thumb. Like it once it gets to that point, it just you're not freezes supposed to move a broken me. bone for like six weeks. Yeah, that, well, that was my thought, dude. Well, it's like, not you're broken saying... on the knuckle; it's broken up here. And I could either either. Sorry, I was gonna say either way, your thumb's fucked up. Like you not having full mobility in it. Like I told you this via text. Like I wouldn't chirp about that for weeks, dude. <laughs> Well, like if it's if it's Christmas and you can't still move your thumb, it's like all right. Well, your well, thumb by then might it's have too issue, late, Kevin. Like when I got surgery on my wrist, they they sent me to a physical therapist and they gave me these exercises to do. And they're like, you have to do this routine every single day, or else your wrist is going to heal up and you will permanently lose like movement in it. So I don't want that to happen to my fucking thumb. Understood. And the guy's just like, oh, yeah, um, make an appointment in two to three weeks for a follow-up with your primary doctor. And I was like, all right, well, not 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 related to the question I just asked you. <laughs> and then before I even knew it, the fucking guy vanished like a ninja. Like he just dropped a smoke pellet and peaced out on me. So I just asked the girl, I'm like, when should I start wiggling my thumb to try and get mobility back? In like a day or two? And she just kind of spun around in a circle, looked around and was like, yeah, a day or two. Thumb. And then she and then she dropped a smoke pellet and vanished. And then I'm all by myself. And I was like, ah, man, I fucking hate this. So that whole shit took a real long time. And then it's like, okay, now I have to go to this horror convention. Wait, was Carl with you the whole time? No. Or was she like, after you're done with urgent care, come pick me up? No, then I had to go pick her up at her place and then go That's to Long smart. Beach. And then we had to find parking. And then I just figured, because all the conventions I go to... I really don't try to get there when the door's open for many of them. And usually, once the place has been open for a few hours, everybody's already inside. Oh. You show up with your little QR code or your printout, you get your badge or your wristband, and they send you right in. This fucking place had a line that went out the convention center, out to the street, and then down a quarter mile, and then back into this industrial complex, and then it started snaking like a Six Flags line. So it took over an hour just to get into the place. And then by the time we got in there, there was only like three or four hours left until the goddamn place closed. But, um, you know, since it was a horror convention, it had a few mazes set up, kind of like Halloween Horror Nights, where it's, you know, that's cool. big creepy maze and they have it set up and people jump out and scare you and there's cool shit. And we were just like, all right, well, let's check out, let's, let's try one of these mazes. So we pick a line. And the, the signage was all weird, and you know it was they had all the lights off for the most part, and it was real dimly lit. We waited in this line for 10 minutes before I realized we weren't in a line that snakes. We were in a line next to the line that snakes. And everybody had lanyards, and we only had wristbands, and I was like, oh shit. We might have been waiting in a VIP line this whole time, and we did not get VIP tickets. And it, it turned out that was the case. So then we had to walk out of there and go to the bitch-ass line, which... I think that line was also another hour. And they had this fucking guy. You know when you go to Halloween Horror Nights, they have staff members in creepy costumes running around, hiding in bushes and jumping out and scaring you and shit. So this fucking guy, Carl and I are talking, and this guy comes up behind her and, like, had these, like, finger symbols or finger clackers and, like, jumped out of nowhere and clacked them in her ear. And she jumped out of her skin and was like, ah! And he's like, ah, oh, you got me. You got her, yeah. And then this guy, he just walks off and he's kind of dressed like a zombie or some shit. And I'm watching him to see, I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch him scare other people. And he just walked the line. He was just walking up and down. And then later on, he comes back and fucking gets Carl again. And this time, you know, she had already gotten scared by the guy, so she didn't react at all. And we just look at him and we're like, okay. So we go back to our conversation. This guy got her like five or six more times. And I'm watching him. He's not doing it to anybody else. And he, at one point, he snuck up behind her and like blew in her face. And I'm like, motherfucker, don't fucking blow COVID in people's faces. Like, I know America's back, baby, but to some degree, don't <clears throat> blow in a stranger's fucking face. He's shooting his shot with Carl. I guess, but like, 
she was like, she was like, is it just me or is this guy not doing this to anybody else? And I'm like, no, I've been watching him. He's not harassing anybody but you. This is really fucking weird. She's like, I'm going to lose my shit if he comes over here again. So, you know, we're in this line for an hour and we're talking again and I see this guy coming and I'm watching him and I'm watching him. And mid sentence, he just wa- he didn't even sneak up behind her. Like we watched him come up, and then he just starts wagging his hand in her face, and she's like, she like laid into him. She's like, "Hey, can you fucking chill out? Like this is getting really obnoxious. You're not doing this to anybody else. Just stop. Bother somebody else. Stop." She said that. Yeah, and the guy oh, wow. then the guy just like starts staring at her. So I step up to him and I'm like, "Hey, you uh you really like her, don't you?" And he just like, lo- like, kind of like looked around and then peaced out and never bothered us again. But I was like, I'm about to get thrown out of this place before we even get to experience a single thing because I'm going to strangle this fuck. I would made for, I mean, the story is good already, but it would have <laughs> made for a little bit better of a story if we got red carded from Horicon. I even said, it. I'm like, do you think if I strangle this fucking guy that they'll kick me out? I like, mean- at the end of the day, if this guy goes and tells on me, my defense afterwards is like, but he wouldn't stop scaring her. Eh, not going to hold up. They're going to look yeah, at me as the bad guy. Yeah, that's kind of the point of horror con. Could you have like, taken this person with your, with your thumb situation the way it is? I think I could have. He okay. was smaller than me and skinnier than me. Sounds like you have the uh, edge there. And you I have probably the- didn't. You have the motivation. Well, I mean, if he has any squabbles, you're in trouble. But you have the motivation of not looking like a pussy. You're not want to look like a pussy in front of Carl. I mean, it also was just like, like he literally did not do this to anybody, but Carl. It wasn't racially motivated. You think it was sexually? Hmm. I do think it might have been sexually. Okay. Well, I mean, you got to feel at least a little bit better about that. There's no place for racism here, but I mean, if he's kind of saying you have a hot girlfriend, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah, that the the it turned out that maze that we waited to get into had like three turns. One room just had a bunk bed in it. There was it was the most bare bones, stupid, worthless maze I've ever seen in my fucking life. We walked through like three rooms. There were two actors in it. One girl was just walking around holding her head, being like, oh, no, she's evil. She's evil. And then we went into this other room with a bed, and somebody poked their head out from underneath the bed. And then we went through, like, this this car wash, dangly, like, flap thing. And then we're back out in the convention, and we looked at each other like, oh, my God. That was it. We waited an hour for that. It was 45 seconds. We even said, like, the line wrapped around it, and we looked at each other, and I'm like, it's kind of concerning that we're not hearing anybody, like, scream. Nobody's, like, yelling out, getting scared. Um, So, I mean, the whole thing, we didn't didn't have a lot of time, so all we pretty much got to do was that stupid thing and then walk around the floor of vendors, which they actually did have really cool shit. Um, I mean... Nothing cool enough for me to buy, because at this point, with how cluttered my place is, like, I obviously don't need any more fucking trinkets. I don't need any more horror movie clothes. So, I was just like, this stuff is cool. If I had a house, I might buy some of these things, but I don't. Did did Carl buy anything? Did she express interest in buying anything? There were a few things, but she didn't pull the trigger. It's too bad. The is coolest this place always in Long Beach because it sounds like it's making Long Beach look really bad. Really bad. I don't know. It's it's Midsummer Scream, and I think it was the fifth time they've done it. It was my first time going, but um, the coolest thing I got to do because they did have a celebrity alley, and I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to see who this fucking place deems as celebrities. But they they did have some some real red shirts. Like, man, what a reach. They had they had some ancient like ninety five year old guy and apparently he's one of the original actors from the haunted mansion ride at Disney. I was like, eh, okay, yep. That would be completely lost on me. I'm not waiting in line to meet that old fart. I'm not paying was to Doug get his Jones autograph. There. I didn't see Doug Jones. That would have been cool. Yeah, but I did get to meet the creators of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. 
Okay. And I, I definitely, well, that's huge. Did you, did you take a picture with them? I did. It's on my huh. it's on my Instagram. I totally geeked out. Uh, I I even paid for this a printout of the Killer Clowns poster that the three Chiodo brothers signed. So that made the nice. trip worth it. Nice. Is that, is that going up there somewhere on the wall? You got to put. You got to uh, frame it still. It. You know what? It might just be put in the closet to where if I'm ever at a position in life where I can afford something more than a one bedroom apartment, maybe I'll put it up. But for now, for now it's benched. It's just a cool thing All right. that I'm stoked to own. It's going to be harder to be in that position. If you keep spending your money on stupid shit, not to say anything at Horicon is stupid. That's not what I mean. I mean, Just look, maybe if, I, other stuff. if I sold all this shit in here, I probably wouldn't improve my station in life at all. <laughs> you at least get a two bedroom, one one for your uh, podcasting and one for your sleeping. That's at, at this mm-hmm. point in life at 40. That's the best I can hope for before I die. Maybe one day I can afford a two bedroom apartment. And just Man, make one you of those. You weren't this studio. depressed about being forty last week. What's happened? <laughs> it's a thumb thing, huh? So I got yeah, you down. I guess. I'll tell you what, though. I did do my homework. I watched my cousin Vinny. I gave my cousin Vinny a rewatch. I didn't do any of my homework. Well, you're in you detention. didn't watch Better Off Dead. You get detention. I, I mean, I am comfortable enough with my viewings of both of those movies to not dispute the results of this poll. All right. Well, your movie feel the dreams was second, right? I believe so. Yes. My cousin Vinny crushed you guys poll that I think like 55%. So did more than both of your guys is combined. Kevin, my brothers watched this one with me as well. So this isn't just me, but are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious with this shit? I'm starting to think if I want to recommend a movie to Jeff, I should just give you a link for one of those YouTube channels that people put on when they leave the house and something for their cats to watch. (laughs) I'm starting to think that your wheelhouse is just baby shark on a a, a loop. I do think this highlights the age difference between us. I know you're feeling pretty down about being 40. Let me just remind you that you are older than me. And... um. I don't know. We both have young parents. And I think one of the benefits in this case of my young parents is that they just thought John Cusack must have been corny in the 80s. I don't know. I was never like John Cusack didn't even come on my radar until Con Air. I really didn't realize he had this whole fucking career beforehand and was like a mega star. It's crazy to me just how long they've allowed John Cusack to suck in movies for Apparently, it dates back to the early 80s, but uh, I don't know. I guess I'm very thankful that my parents had me watch Tango and Cash and Roadhouse and Steven Seagal movies when I was younger instead of this fucking horse shit. Yeah, you just need cat videos. <laughs> Dude, I'm starting to think that's I, why that's why you got Jeff with a G, because the G stands for garbage palette. I think we should do... A Steven Seagal versus John Cusack fucking MSPH movie pull-off. Five dick draft. I mean, I know Con Air and 1408 are just fucking awesome movies. I, I really enjoy those. But I'm not feeling very confident, or at least I wouldn't expect you to feel very confident of Cusack movies three through five. Or as I feel very strong about Steven Seagal movies three through five, I feel really very strong about Steven Seagal movies three through eight. So like Steven Seagal, I, I mean, your starter has to be Under Siege, right? That's the best Steven Seagal movie. Perhaps. I mean, if I'm if I'm being strategic about it, maybe I I take like Hard to Kill or Above the Law because. I mean, Con Air is beating every Steven Seagal movie, probably. Like, I, I legitimately like probably. Steven Seagal's... I legitimately like Steven Seagal's first five movies as much as Con Air. 
that's how much I think of those movies. But I, I'll under I understand. Like Most Steven people. Seagal's whole thing and in, in like just about all of his movies are him just standing still and people running at him and him just doing like a Kia flip where the person just literally throws themselves into his arms and he flips them. So you probably haven't seen one of these Steven Seagal movies in a long time, have you? We we did one for like an Ellis show review so we could clown on it. Which one was that? Do you remember? If it's one of the newer ones, if it's not late 80s, early 90s, Seagal. No, it was 80s, Fuck 90s. Fuck you guys for making him look bad. It was like Mark for Death. It might have been Mark for Death or something. I actually... I what, think it, I remember it might have been... you or, or Alice posting this on your Instagram, and I unironically responded with, fucking awesome movie. Yeah, I think, I think it was one of the 15 Steven Seagal movies where someone kills his wife and he has to get revenge. By fl- yeah. flipping a bunch of henchmen into tables, that was that was literally <laughs> the whole fucking thing with his first five movies. Is someone he was related to got killed by gangsters, and he had to roll. It was they pretty much like they just took the taken idea from Steven Seagal. Like that was his fucking idea. You know, who, you know who I bet would play for the live tour? Steven Seagal. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, and it would really break my heart to have to walk away from Steven Seagal after siding with those fucking terrorists. So, but like, um, I'm country, I'm country over fucking Seagal. All right. So, Cusack. Yeah. Or like, if I was, if I were go gonna, whatever direction you want. Here. Well, no. If I'm, if I was going to like draft Cusack movies to go up against Steven Seagal movies, is everything on the board? Like, hot tub time machine counts. <laughs> sure, yeah. As I said, I know I might lose this one. He's just—I don't know the the public and the fucking industry just think so much more of John Cusack than I do. I, I, it's something I'm not seeing, and that must be the situation here with Better Off Dead. I, I thought it fucking sucked. I think God Booger was in it to save the day here, or else this movie would have been complete dog shit. There's a reason why I don't know anyone in this movie beside John Cusack. And I really wish this podcast were bigger for the obvious reasons. But one of the non-obvious reasons is I would love to bring John Cusack onto this podcast and have you two argue on why that movie doesn't suck. Because I read your Letterbox D review, and it ended with, I can't believe John Cusack hates this movie. He which hates, is yeah, he hates hilarious. all. Of, he hates all of his '80s movies for some reason. Yeah, he hates Better Off Dead, One Crazy Summer, which is my personal favorite John Cusack movie, starring Demi Moore and Bobcat Goldthwait. I mean, need I say more? <laughs> no, no, you do not need to say more. Demi Moore is in that. Super hot. I'm interested already. Otherwise. Like Better Off Dead just had so many like great lasting 80s moments. Like the fucking the paper boy who's constantly wants his two dollars, a ski off to like vanquish the jock at the end. I'll say that fucking final ski off was like really well shot. That was impressive. Yeah, and the guy had to do it with one ski, whoever whichever poor stunt man had to sub in for John Cusack to ski the what was it like the K twelve? Were they? Yeah, <laughs> he only had one ski, which is ridiculous. But whatever, it's not like once once you're an hour and twenty minutes through Better Off Dead, it's like all right, whatever. This guy's on one ski, like it's not the biggest thing in the world. Like the I, hot the hot foreign exchange student that lives across the street with the creepy family. That was whatever. awesome. You get a live performance from E.G. Daily. I don't know who E.G. Daly is. I think she I... was she was Dottie in um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. All right, whatever. Another um, five dicker, by the way. Of course, yeah. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, sure. Let's not yeah, listen, guys. While we're on the topic of five dickers, um, I've come. A grudge match has been requested. Uh, at the next MSPH wrestling by Canadian Lowman Chris. 
Uh, and I have made a, I have agreed to his stipulations without <laughs> consulting you. Uh, but that Did you at least consult Dom. Dom is the one that pushed me in the direction of not consulting. Interesting. Fair, okay. Fair enough. I mean, he's the commissioner. Okay. Uh, it is going to be a backstage brawl. And if I lose in MSPH, MSPH canon, that dog shit piece of movie, dog shit piece of crap movie, mean guns that he made me watch will have to be forever known as a five dicker. Wait. So who's in the match? Me against Low Man Chris. Oh. Does Low Man Chris think it's a five dicker? He does. And I think it's the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life prior to The Dead Don't Die. Hmm. All right. So I have to like unorganically bring up this movie. So you have to announce it as a five dicker. Well, that wasn't it's, part of the stipulation, but now I guess it is. I mean, what's the point? I, you I have agreed enough? to change my letterbox D score from half a star to five dicks. What about if, if you win? Then he has to change it uh, to publicly make it make a video oh, that we fuck. post public. You didn't start recording. Nope. Recording in progress. Fucking did I, I it again. I asked you earlier. I thought you did start recording. I thought I did too. I gave him record permission as soon as he signed on. So this one wasn't on me. God damn it. Uh, but Chris will have to make a video saying that it's a piece of shit that we'll post on Patreon for everyone to see. Hi, YouTube. Hey, what's up, guys? So you don't have to go back and listen to the audio version to catch the first, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of this podcast. It's been like 45. Yeah, it almost, might be a little bit longer. It's okay. Man, <laughs> time flies by when you're having fun. I never know how long we're recording. And then just like eventually Kevin's wrapping up and giving out the emails and the voicemail. All By right, the way, so if it, you, whenever we do an episode and you guys don't hear the narc, f- feel free to chime in. It didn't even dawn on me. It, we just went right to rolling. I I don't hear the narc when Dom and I record because I'm the one hitting record, so I don't even think of it. It's always shocking oh. when she pops up on my screen to me. I'm oblivious I'm at all everything here, so I just you, you don't really expect me right, right, to have any responsibility here. All right, fine. It's on me. Uh, but not Leonard. Where the fuck is Leonard the weed pickle hasn't been dragged for anything in a long time. Is he still around? No, he's been dissolved in acid. I had enough of his shit. <laughs> All right, it is your fault then. <laughs> uh, uh, John Cusack movies. Oh, well, I thought you were going to say something cool, Shuddy. Like we should have um, Dom should make <laughs> John Cusack a character and Steven Seagal a character. And then. Oh, well, sorry. I didn't. You didn't like what I had to say, but I agree with all of those. Steven Seagal is already a character. I pitched, unless I think he might have lost right. his contract to MSPH Wrestling recently. Yeah, he's gonna he, go live tour for sure now. Yeah, when he became a, a traitor to America and moved to Russia. <laughs> but like, if we made if we made like Ray Fines and John Cusack tag team versus. Dude, I'll handicap match both those fucking Joe Pesci, Joe Pesci and Steven Seagal. I actually, I pitched Dom a match a while back. Sorry. Um, Where it'd be you and Shuddy versus B-Rabbit and Maynard from Tool. Well, because they're fucking pussies, we'd win. Yeah, well... Kevin doesn't win shit in MSPH. Hopefully you're doing all the heavy lifting because Kevin can't get a win in fucking our wrestling promotion. It's a goddamn disgrace. Can't can't fucking get a win in anything. So, yeah, I've already pitched uh, some some related ideas to to Dom about uh, MSPH wrestling meets our five dick movie fights or drafts. So I'm sure something will be cooking, but I you mean, liked I did, my cousin I, Vinny, right? I did concede. My cousin Vinny is a five dicker, for sure. You can you you think it's better than Better Off Dead as well? No, 
I would give Better Off Dead the edge because like the last time I watched Better Off Dead, like the second it ended, I mean, this just the goddamn score is so good, and when he gets that Camaro running, and then he takes the hot French chick into that that stadium, that song that plays when he's b- busting out the sax, awesome ending song, and like yeah, the what second, was that? Why were they at Dodger Stadium? I don't know. It's the eighties. Cool shit just happens. <laughs> All right, cool. Like the the second that movie ended, I was like. Fucking five dicker, and God damn it, I want to just start it over from the beginning and immediately watch it again. Just do a double feature, back to back, better off dead. But when I when I finished you- watching my cousin Vinny, I mean the the perfect sign, telltale sign of a five dicker or a potential five dicker is when the credits hit and you're like, oh fuck, that's it, and you want more. And that that did happen with my cousin Vinny. I'm like, God damn it, I'm gonna miss those characters. I wish there was more. I wish I got like just a few more minutes with all of them. Wish it was a Netflix series and he yeah. was he was trying a whole bunch of cases. Like Marissa Tomei got an Oscar for that. Totally warranted. She should have. I feel like there should have been a couple more Oscars to go around for that movie as well. Joe Pesci Dude, should have gotten an Oscar. The fucking prosecuting attorney is uh is a low key just like Titan in that movie. That guy yeah. kills it. And it's so He's weird like, how like identical it seems like everybody hates joe pesci in that town like the judge i mean fred gwynn also should have gotten an oscar yeah fucking incredible performance from herman munster but like he hated joe pesci from the get-go and wanted to make his life hell and give him no concessions and make sure he lost his case and the the cop the sheriff hated joe pesci like everybody hated joe pesci but for some reason that attorney like, wanted to go chill with him. He's like, hey, let's go play golf. Let's hang. And, yeah. and Pesci's like, hey, let me get a look at your fucking papers. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to let you get my look at my papers, but let's go hang out. Well, it could, it could be, like, some sort of strategy where it's just, like, he's, like, I don't know. If, if he, like, befriends Joe Pesci, maybe Pesci will take it easy in the court case. Maybe. I don't know. But that is, that is a decent observation. I even made a note. 25 minutes into the movie, I was like, all right, yep, five dicker. <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already picking up the vibe. This fucking rules. Yeah, dude, that movie fucking kicks ass. And the, the running gags in it, the gag of him, like no matter which motel he's staying at, something wakes him up at five in the morning. <clears throat> I love that. Yeah. Love that runner. I love when they go into the, the diner to get, to get like to eat, and she looks at the menu, and she's like, um, all right, I guess I'll get breakfast. And then he looks at it, and he's like, all right, make that too. And then they show the menu, and there's three items on the menu, and one is breakfast, one is lunch, and one is dinner. And they're like $1.99. <laughs> I was like, god damn it, that's a good bit. Yeah, I like the mud in the tire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything. About, or, like, the fucking replacement suit that he has to wear when he goes into court. That, like, weird red tux with long tails. Yeah. It just had I so like many how- classic moments. I like how Marissa Tomei was like low, like an actual expert with cars. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I mean, and even even Ralph authentic. Macchio was was awesome in it. Yeah, dude. There's that really was, no fat in that movie. No, just yeah, definitely a five dicker. I agree. Fair enough. Even I, though I you're honestly, saying such slanderous, hor- horrible things about Better Off Dead. I know, and you watched that before I watched Better Off Dead, so I really went into it like hoping to like it more because I don't want to like be so combative here, and I don't think your taste is that whack. It's just I do think this is a bit of like a you grew up with this, and I didn't, even though we're only a couple years apart. And I even loved like the the his little brother that was constantly just ordering things from the back of comic books, and he walks by, and there's a bunch of like ho bags in his room. Because he, yeah. he, bought, he bought a book that was like How to Pick Up Easy Women or something like that. Yeah. And then at the How end of the movie, he blasts, women. <laughs> he blasts off in a fucking rocket ship. It's just pure 80s wonderfulness. I'll never get tired of that fucking movie. But you know what? I did, 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 I did, the writers... see, I did see it as a kid. And John Cusack, when I was growing up, did always remind me of my Uncle Rob. And like I idolized my Uncle Rob growing up. So there could have just been a thing like they they look so similar that I just had a natural predisposition to loving John Cusack. But 
I don't know. I feel like a whole bunch of other people. It got crushed in the vote. Everybody overwhelmingly picked my cousin Vinny. But in the comment section, everybody was tweeting about Better Off Dead. So at least I know I I'm not alone in lo loving that movie. Yeah, I noticed that a bunch of people commented saying that Better Off Dead is a five-dicker or a classic or something of that nature. Did the writers never go to fucking high school? Like, why was why was everyone excited about the the, the science class and, like, trying to show out in the science class? That was... That's not a thing. No, that was another gag. Gotcha. That, like, kids in this town are, for some for some reason, giant dorks. Yeah, they like and, science and skiing. And John Cusack is like the one guy who just doesn't get it. Like, why is every why does everybody so excited for science class? I felt him there. Where was that mountain? Was that Big Bear? Like, they were clearly in Southern California. In fact, the fucking movie ended in Dodger Stadium. So, couldn't be any more Los Angeles. Kind of factually. <laughs> Where the fuck were they skiing? And what, like... Let me see. I'm trying to like, Google it right now. I felt like the town was like Pasadena or Glendale. They have a fucking ski team at this high school. Um, okay, so most of the movie was shot in Los Angeles, except for the various ski scenes, which were filmed in Snowbird, Utah. Oh, wow. And Savage, Savage Steve Holland made this film under schedule and under budget. Makes sense. What's, is Sav I saw that. Is Savage his actual name or is that like a Maynard James Keen Keenan thing where he just like added he just added Savage to the front of his shit? Yeah, that's just like his his nom de plume nom de plume? Nom Oh nom de something. Yeah, I forget what those things are called. Like I'm just gonna be dragging Jeff Clark. Like I'm just gonna <laughs> put that I'm just gonna write that down everywhere. But yeah, he also did um, One Crazy Summer. These were like back-to-back, -back, released in 85 and 86. Whatever happened to that fucking guy's career? I think John Cusack had him murdered. <laughs> John, John Cusack hated him for him putting John Cusack in his movies. What a weird twist, huh? It looks like he did just a whole bunch of kids' shows. Like he just directed a bunch of kids' series, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show. Lizzie McGuire, Zoe 101, Ned's Declassified School Survival. Uh, yeah, the, looks like talking about stuff like that, Dom and I watched Harley Davidson and The Marlboro Man starring Mickey Rourke and Don Johnson for What the Fuck Did I Just Watch? And the director's very next movie after that, which had lots of boobies in it, was Free Willy. There's nudity in Free Willy? No, no. <laughs> Harley Davidson and Marlboro Man had lots of nudity. Oh, and then the oh, okay, director's okay. next movie was Free Willy. Well, the fucking whale was naked throughout the whole movie. Yeah, I saw that whale's tit. <laughs> There's nudity in Free Willy? That would be like... Uh. Like the Willie jumps over him on that like jetty and his fucking big whale dick just smacks him across the face in slow-mo. Would have been sweet. Uh, Nobody did that when everybody was parodying Free Willy. The Left proper term, the I think, is dork, right? Isn't that yeah. the name of a whale stick? Yeah, he got dork slapped. Dork slapped. Man, it's very rare you get to appropriately use that term. I know. I had, I had to get it in there. <laughs> Especially um, after my fiend fane gaff earlier. I did go and see a movie in the, the theater. Yeah, I, went to... I was trying to invite you, you and Carl over to hang out with me, but instead you were going to see Nope. Did you did you see that in Long Beach? No, downtown. Damn, went to the Alamo. You did a house. lot of fucking driving. Yeah. Yep. Um, Terrible. But I'm I'm kind of more on your side, Jeff, than Shuddy with Nope. I just right, didn't so get we can it. get really? into it now. We can get into it now because. Well, well I mean, now it's a spoiler for all you guys, so maybe skip ahead. But I mean, since we, we are all on the same page, we can talk about it. Yeah, I guess we can give people a chance to skip if you don't want nope spoilers. It has only been out for a week. Well, skip ahead. It's all good. <laughs> I, I just don't get Gordy. Like, okay, Gordy. 
What the, was the point of that whole thing? Like, why did that matter? I think the point of that was like the exploitation of animals. Like they they had a ranch full of horses to use in Hollywood movies and they used a monkey. And also, you know, heavy, heavy spoilers here for, for Nope, but when the monkey flipped out and just ate the faces of people on set of that TV show. Little Steven Yun was hiding under a table, and they, like, I guess couldn't see each other's eyes, so they didn't make eye contact, which is why the monkey went in for a fist, for a fist bump. And the whole thing with the UFO was, don't make eye contact with it, and you'll be fine. Gotcha. Okay. They, you know, in the, in the very beginning, when they held that thing up to the horse, and the horse freaked out, yeah, like the uh, mirror or whatever, the yeah, reflective thing. Mirror ball. There, I mean, there was a lot of stuff I didn't get, and it just... That, that's kind of what frustrates me about Jordan Peele's movies. Like, Get Out was pretty straightforward. Us, it turned into a homework assignment. I, you know, my homie at, who was in the podcast at the time, still my homie, was like, yeah, but do you know what this is about? You know what that's about? And it's like, what? I got to go home and Wikipedia a movie to like get all the fucking messages like that's stupid. And when you bring it up this point, it's like, all right, but uh, the whole, to me, the idea of just like OJ, which is awesome. That's, that's actually the coolest part of the whole movie is that that guy's name is OJ. <laughs> um, it's fucking ridiculous that like he knows aliens cause he knows horses. Like get the fuck out of here. Like, it can't work. Like, it can't be that easy. It, that felt lame. Um, I like how they pretty much Rob Sprantzed his father's death. It was, like, it was debris. Just debris. It's like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> debris fell off a fucking plane and murdered his father. Yeah, I mean, I fucking, I love Keith David. Yeah. Anytime he pops up in a movie, like, my heart skips a beat. Like, oh, God damn it, I love this guy. And then he like fucking dies right in the beginning. I was like, no. Right. Huge loss. The the guy, the kid who worked at Fry's, I kind of like the character, but he also doesn't really fit into the movie. Like the story, I don't know. And the cinematographer, the 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 villain from Crow, the Crow, I like that guy, and I don't think enough of him was used in it. It just felt like not very focused and to use like a a Goran Ramsey line he just they didn't edit it well he got to edit yourself more like I, I did like the twist with the UFO I did think that was kind of cool and it was different and a unique take I was interested you know I like yeah it, it strung along nicely and I'm like all right where's this going what's gonna happen next uh what's the big reveal what's the twist and- I was locked in the whole time I was like, oh, this is all right. I'm expecting something awesome. Last 30 minutes were pretty cool. Um, I got to give props. Like when when Kiki Palmer did the Akira slide on the bike, like d- d- like sideways drifted on the on a motorcycle, like away from the camera with her foot out. Like I I was like, holy shit, holy shit. And I was talking to Carl about that. I was like, I, I lost my shit when Kiki Palmer did the Akira slide. And she was like, what the fuck is that? And I, so I went to Google it and I, I typed in Akira slide and it auto completed to Nope. So I clicked on it and it went to some, you know, three second YouTube clip of, of, um, Jordan Peele getting interviewed and say, some guy being like, Hey, I really like the Akira slide. And he just lost all composure and got giddy. He's like, I can't fucking believe I did it. I can't believe I got to do it. Like he was so pumped that he got to do an Akira homage in it. Yeah. Man, someone just knocked on my door or something. Fuck them. Uh, Somebody knocked on your door. I think I so. see a face in the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I don't know. It just, it was a little slow. It took a long time to get going. I found Kiki Palmer to be like a little obnoxious in it. And Daniel yeah. Kalu- Kaluuya, who is awesome, just kind of seemed, I don't know, a little just low energy and flat. I don't know if that just played into him just not handling his dad's death well, but he just didn't have a lot of screen presence, which he usually just kills it. 
No, the idea was he, he was supposed to be the quiet, shy one that was just good with the animals. Yeah, yeah, but just I, I, like in working with like movie studios and companies, that makes sense. But like when he's hanging out at the house with Kiki Palmer, like that's when he should probably demonstrate some more energy. To Kevin's point, and it did I just seem I thought it was fabulous. It did seem just completely out of nowhere when, like, they just cut to Stephen Yun's ranch, and he's all of a sudden like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna call aliens out." It's like, wait, when does since when did he know about these things? And he can like bait them, and how come this time they took him? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this was this the first time he's ever doing this, and why is there no buildup in the story for this? Yeah, I was like, confused why, by just why like, they just like copying pasting this into the story. It was weird. Yeah, it just a lot of stuff just felt like it plopped out of nowhere. Yeah, and like, yeah, there's a bunch of like cool little scenes, like stacked up next to each other, but like the movie itself was like ah, eh, whatever. Yeah. When it ended, I was just like, ah. Oh. Really? All right. I guess there were some cool moments in there. But it seems like, like the, everybody's flipping out about it. Like, it's got a really good score. Yeah. And I, I'm Clearly, you and I are in the minority. Because I know tons of people that have seen it and just straight up loved it. Yeah, I just don't like when, it, when like, the attitude or the tone becomes like, you, well, you just don't get it. It's a Jordan Peele movie. You, just, you probably just don't get it. It's like, all right, all right, motherfucker. I saw it. I, I I gave my score. Uh, I don't have to go and fucking Google the movie that I just watched to to to, to get it. Like it, maybe it's on the filmmaker to help me get it. Yeah, and I heard that the whole underlying meaning of it is everybody is so obsessed with their phones and staring at their phones, and just the entitlement that comes with taking your phone out and just filming anything you want and sharing it publicly. I guess that was the underlying moral of the movie. Oh. Which even after getting that explained to me, I was like, yeah, I still don't get it. <laughs> I definitely yeah. didn't get it then. <laughs> yeah, that, that hearing that does nothing for my review or for my yeah. feeling towards that movie. It's like, and all also, right, whatever. I didn't get the thing with the Gordy scene. There was a slipper standing upright. Like, why was yeah. there a floating slipper? What did that mean? What was the point behind that? I, that's I don't know. Probably an easy Google search. I'm going to do it right now. So I don't know. I mean, I am shitting on it and saying a lot of the things that I didn't like, but I mean, I was roped in and, you know, I was curious about the UFO stuff and it kept me engaged. Are you going to give like, this like a fucking four or something? You're not going to say something stupid, are you? I don't know. It's like I keep flip flopping back and forth between 2.75 and 3 because it wasn't horrible. I just, I guess. I went in with higher expectations because so many people were blown away by it. And then when it yeah. ended, I was just like, that's it? Really? So this is like, we're talking about food chub over expectation. This could be like movie it, dicks over expectation. It could be. And it could in this be. case, it was under expectation because he just built such like a high standard. And I don't know. I thought, I thought a lot more of this and, I probably would have bummed me out years ago if Arrival didn't come out and already shit the bed way in front of this. You guys know how I like my alien movies. Um, but it was just disappointing, honestly. Just, I'm, I'm not like I'm going to go see Jordan Peele's next movie opening night probably, but this one, I'll uh, hold the line on it. It was a dud. So what's your official score? You know what? Just because of the Akira slide, I'll bump it up to a three-dicker. Wow. What did Carl say? What was her score? She does 10. She does 10s. Right? Yeah, 10. she gave it a 6.5. Wow. That's a 3.25. Yeah. yeah. She liked it a little more than you. Eh, yeah. I got there. Yeah. I figured it out. Um, Shuddy, did you find anything about the slipper? Nothing... That is easy to explain. Oh, all right. Like all right. there was a long thing, and it just I, I controlled F shoe, and like shoe popped up in this 
whole web page article. So I tried skimming it to see if there was a concise answer, but it seemed like the whole article was explaining the importance of the shoe. Good so you have Lord. to read the whole thing and then synthesize it on in real time and you don't feel like it. I got you. Synthesize it, huh? Sometimes you just say things. I don't know if they're right. <laughs> I believe you meant That's... summarize. No. No, I actually did mean synthesize. Corn Maki Chew. <laughs> Obviously, summarize works probably better than the word that I use, but I think the word that I use still works. This is what makes, this is what everyone tunes into this podcast for, is to hear me miss mispronounce or misuse words so i'm just Etzel, giving the audience what Etzel, they're looking for Etzel, Etzel Engelfort. you guys have the, you guys have the easy job i have to figure out new ways to make myself look stupid every week cheese and ham sandwich you guys just waltz in here and collect your fucking paychecks every time i i piss i'm out here it smells terrible putting in work fucking grinding tarnishing my legacy yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, I always what have is the nipples. proper English grammar for the only plants that consume other animals and protozoans? I would say synthesize. <laughs> Carnivorous plants, Jeff. I've seen probably 20 <laughs> naked dudes. I don't like how this podcast is going. Fat, juicy slab of How meat. many bones does a giraffe have in its neck? None. It's all muscles. Seven. Exactly the same as humans. I didn't know, I didn't know how many we had. If I was Ow. being 100% honest. Ow. What was the suck, Dylan? What the fuck is this shit? The, the fuck, fuck is, is this shit, mammal? Kevin? The fuck Why are you coming is at me mammal? right now? Because you pick a stupid fucking movie that loses? The fuck is a mammal? <laughs> hey, we're just Man, having fun, guys. Yeah? Do you, you guys, guys watch no anything? Fucking honor. Do you guys watch anything in this past week? Um, I've been watch- catching up on Better Call Saul. Oh. That brings me actually to... Uh, your random brain question. Random brain qu- question, yeah. If Kevin can find the button. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for today's random, random brain, brain question. question. So I don't know if you guys saw the most recent Between Two Flushes. I haven't. I, I saw it went up right before we started. So I bought, I try to do like a breakfast dessert every weekend. And this weekend I went with jumbo cinnamon rolls from Trader Joe's. Now they're in a can, and it was really, really hard for me to open this can, like really hard. And the fucking can like exploded in my face and just shot cinnamon sugar all over my face. Um, I was able to salvage the cinnamon rolls, though, and they were fucking delicious. But Kevin, Mr. Anti-Cinnamon, which is convenient since you recently called me a lot of derogatory things, including the pickiest eater you know. How do you feel about cinnamon rolls? I like cinnamon or, rolls. Or Cinnabon, for that matter. Cinnabon is absolutely fucking delicious. I don't like um, like artificial cinnamon, like uh, cinnamon alcohol drinks and cinnamon gum. I'm not a fan of those. It's like Fireball, essentially. Yeah, How yeah, about yeah. Correct. Fake cinnamon. Yeah, How fake- about Goldschlager? Nope. No. Like, fake cinnamon stuff fucks me up. Like, desserts with cinnamon sprinkled on it is fucking exquisite. I love it. Has any, has anyone came out of a Goldschlager night not completely fucked up? Like, pretty much, like, close to alcohol poisoning? Right? Like, everyone, whenever they told you they drank Goldschlager last night, it's like, oh, you probably threw up or passed out. or Yeah, Goldschlager is Satan's piss. I fucking I've had it like three times in my life and it's been awesome every time. But it's <laughs> I've been I've been seriously fucked up because of which. Well, yeah, I, it's a small doses booze for me. I don't mind it that much. I, I told you guys the reasoning of my mm. hatred of cinnamon, right? Yeah, because you 
Didn't you chug like a cinnamon Listerine bottle when you were a kid or something? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying I to, know. I was trying to be like Marty McFly. I wanted to be an adult. And the only way I could think of was to pretend to drink alcohol. So I grabbed a bottle of mouthwash, pretended it was alcohol and drank the whole fucking thing while watching back to the future. And now just like smelling artificial cinnamon gives me PTSD. All right. Well, I thought about it when I was recording this between two flushes and eating my cinnamon rolls. And it also uh, relates because it was Cinnabon was a a big part of the most recent Better Call Saul, which I know you haven't seen, uh, Shuddy. Well, I know that in the f- flash forward sequences, he's working at a Cinnabon under an assumed identity because they tease that in the opening sequence of every season of the show since season three, I think. Well, the last episode I watched was... There's one episode in that starts off a season where he gets locked in a storeroom by accident, then another one where he has a heart attack, then another where he gets recognized, and then the start of season six was his house being cataloged. Well, they, they just straight up do an entire Cinnabon episode. Is it in color or is it in black and white? Black and white. <sighs> so this gets me to the larger point that I wanted to make here. We're Better Call Saul is fucking epic. And we're kind of splitting hairs here. But I think this most recent episode, like forever, puts it behind Better Call uh, a Breaking Bad. You know? Like, if you think about the last few episodes of Breaking Bad, like, there was just, it was all systems ago. It was fucking legacy building. It was, it was kick-ass content. They didn't let any episode kind of fall by the wayside. I don't know how you felt about this most recent one, but I, I thought it was a dud. It's like, you can't use one of your last, like, five episodes here. Yeah, it is kind of a bummer that, that, like, I mean, it was a good episode. I liked it. It was, it was just yeah. like I would have I would have preferred something that tied more into the main story. And who knows? I mean, they these motherfuckers can weave these webs in such impressive ways. Maybe there is a payoff with this, but I mean I liked I liked uh Jerry from Parks and Rec being in there and him being like a Cinnabon addict. Is that what made you want to go get a cinnamon roll? Watching Jerry eat like five hundred cinnamon rolls throughout this episode? I actually don't know if I bought the cinnamon rolls before or after I watched Better Call Saul. I always forget that it's on a Monday and I don't end up watching it until Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm, I'm probably going to watch it tonight, actually, because we're talking about it and I know that it's on tonight. But like, I uh, I think I might have went to Trader Joe's before I saw the cinnamon rolls or maybe not. Maybe I maybe I saw the Cinnabon episode and just like. I don't know. It was subconsciously. I picked cinnamon rolls as my breakfast dessert this weekend. You got mind controlled. So when you say fucking breakfast dessert, do you like go and eat cereal and then have a dessert after it? Or do you just have dessert for breakfast? No, I have dessert after my breakfast. Usually I'll eat like eggs and bacon. Sometimes I'll like eggs and chorizo, but it's like eggs and a breakfast meat. And then I'll have dessert. Sometimes it'll be muffins. Sometimes it'll be donuts coffee cake, pancake bread, cinnamon rolls. There's a, a bunch of different options. Fuck it. <laughs> just like, I don't know, one of those uh, biscotti, like, coffee dunkers. I mean, there's just so much breakfast dessert you can do. French toast. I mean, I'm not making French toast in my, in my house, but I'm saying, like, you, that would be obviously um, uh, an answer or a response when discussing breakfast dessert. You got breakfast dessert on your uh, birthday weekend. I thought you yeah. should have ordered a breakfast main as well, but hey, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, I just got French Party. toast with fucking ice cream scoops on it. Did you at least pick at Carl's breakfast? Did you eat some, some, some meat some, off of her plate? I had some grits. Hope it wasn't instant grits. No, no self-respecting Southerner makes instant grits. Well said, Kevin. Yeah, you're right. That's that's what I know about Southerners, at least. I did start because they they um, Prime got that new series, Paper Girls, which is based on a comic series that I, you know, read weekly and really really enjoyed. So um, it's a Brian K. Vaughn book, Shuddy. Yeah. 
He wrote like Why the Last Man and Saga and Ex Machina. I, very good books. Are they novels or graphic novels? Graphic novels. They're comics. Okay. All right. You're saying books. Like, well, I don't know if we're talking Tale of Two Cities or Walking Dead. Fair enough. I gotcha. But uh, I mean, I, I like got hooked into this series really early. And when I was still buying original comic pages, I got a page from one of the issues and I've had it on my wall for a long time. And then it, I don't know at what point it gained just so much popularity, but I looked at the, the art brokers website and they sold out of like every single page of paper girls that existed, or at least that was listed for sale. I read the first several arcs of paper girls. Oh yeah. Yeah. And really enjoyed it. Sorry. (laughs) I'm dabbing it up. I was really hoping you guys could keep up your end of the uh, combo here in this paper girl stuff. Cause I, you lost me right when you said paper girl. It's been a day. It's been a day. And I'm just, (laughs) I'm, I'm, I know what Amazon prime is. My homie works there now. Fuck. Apparently. All right, we're all on the same page then. But um, yeah, they they put out. I think the they released the whole season, eight episodes. Carl and I watched the first two, and um, it's doing a good job of staying pretty pretty true to the comic. I feel like they they cast it pretty well, and they made it look really really accurate to the book. It's not the greatest thing I've ever seen, but it's easily watchable. Like they definitely crammed a lot of stuff into the first two episodes, which I watched, to you know sort of keep it intriguing. It's it's these girls that uh, deliver newspapers, you know, super early in the morning in the eighties, and then some supernatural shit goes down. There's some time travel. Um, I'll leave it as as vague as possible, but uh, I I know the I mean the book gets really weird. There's some weird shit. And so far, they're doing they're doing a pretty good job of it. I didn't realize. Uh, first of all, I must have been in fucking La La Land because I other I didn't hear a thing anybody said until you said Brian K. Vaughn. That's what drew me back in. So I didn't know we were even <laughs> even talking about. I I will watch this tonight. This is what I will be doing when we are done recording because I did like the first couple of arcs. It's just when I had to start cutting books and there were 85 Batman titles, I made some slashes to the independent stuff. And that's really the only reason I stopped reading this just like sweet tooth, which weren't they doing a season two of that? Or yeah. is that? No, it's, Hey, I don't remember what the status is, but I know it's a hundred percent coming. I, you know what? I, I could kind of put this along the same line as sweet tooth. You know, it's not, it's not like a, a, a classic all-time series, but it's good enough to like, you know, if I, if I was looking for shows to cut watching, I probably wouldn't cut Paper Girls. But I mean, I'm only two episodes in, but first, first two, I'm, I'm in. It's not like, it's not as good as Stranger Things, which I know is like people are flipping out that it's an unfair comparison. But it it's, it shares similar vibes. It's eighties and follows on like you know teenagers. Have you read or heard in a bunch of places them making the Paper Girls Stranger Things comps? Wait, what? You said you said it's not as good as pa- uh, Stranger Things, and then you said something like that's not a fair comparison or something like that, but. Are people actually making that comparison, or oh, yeah. did you just do all that? over all over the place? Oh, okay. It's it's. I, it's, I mean, it's it's really hard not to. I'm I'm pretty sure the comic of Paper Girls like this is also 80s, right? Yeah, and I and it's supernatural and stuff, and I mean, it's it's definitely gnarlier than Stranger Things. Like they do drop tons of f bombs and shit, so it's not like geared towards kids or teens. Um. But I'm pretty sure the comic started before Stranger Things came out, or at least the comic was like... Okay, yeah. It definitely did. Let's see. Paper Girls. Paper Grills. Nope, Paper Girls. No, you definitely want to stay away from Paper Grills, Shuddy, especially after your most recent barbecuing 
Expo. Yeah, sure. a lot more flammable. October 2015 was issue one. Wow. Holy and shit. Stranger Almost Things. Seven years ago? I didn't even realize. Was that. July of 2016. So uh, it could possibly be said that Stranger Things might have stolen some ideas from this. Eh, maybe. A little bit. A little bit. Hmm. But again, you guys didn't watch anything new? No. I watched The Most Hated Man on the Internet, Ooh. which is a... Yeah, Carl watched done. that too. Did you watch it with her? No. Of Did course, him and Carl it? both watched it. I didn't watch it. She no, watches her documentary. Jeff and oh, Carl, Jeff. Yeah, the, yeah. Two, the two true crime junkies. Yeah. Kevin, you sound like a real selfish son of a bitch, and I should, get, I should help you out with this before Carl catches wind of it but seems like carl is participating in a lot of your fucking bullshit but you're not participating in a lot of hers why don't you try a goddamn true crime document uh documentary maybe i'll I'll put on one of my tommy bay hamey shirts a documentary yeah oh jesus Jeff. and i'll play my kazoo along to the soundtrack i think i said that right i feel good about how i said that <laughs> <laughs> so most hated inter- uh, man on the internet. Oh, fuck, I'm already I, spacing out what this I believe fucking it's guy's name was. It was hunt- <laughs> a retard. Uh, it's it was his name Hunter Moore. Is that what his fucking name was? Just played. Uh, it was this guy who came up with a fucking website called. Oh, I'm spacing out on this one too. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is anyone up? Sorry. And it was pretty much like a revenge porn website. People like would submit pictures of whatever their ex-girlfriends or like uh, it turned into a bunch of people or this guy. And I think someone else that he worked with hacking girls, phones, taking their shit off their email their um, sex off their email and posting it to the Internet. And this guy just didn't give a fuck. And somehow built a cult following. I mean, I could see why people would be attracted to the website. But after like hearing about this guy or familiarizing yourself with this dude's brand or the website itself, I couldn't imagine staying on there very long. But it was essentially just covering this guy's exploits and the website itself, talking to people that either had their content uploaded to the website with their permission or without their permission, just how offended people were, how people who were offended by being on the website originally eventually like grew to like be part of the website's culture and all that shit. It was pretty good. It was, it was kind of crazy just like how much this guy got away with, but I also felt like he didn't really get as big as the, the document, uh, the documentary, made him out to be why are you having such a hard time with that word today i don't know um i'll <laughs> give this mini series three and a half out of five that's it i'm done saying i'm done talking about it how many episodes hey, i'm done talking were, about it how many episodes was it three three yeah they should fucking were they an hour long give or take they should drown that guy in a porta potty. Wait, so did Carl tell talk to you about this? I mean, I saw the the trailer for it and I saw it being promoted, so I knew what it was about. And it's one of the, the see, that's why I don't really like true crime stuff cuz I can watch a fictional movie and watch a bunch of bad things happen and then at the end of the day, they never really happen. It was all fake. It was all pretend. Like that stuff just ruins my fucking day. Like it would just piss me off. I just don't want to get pissed off. Fair enough. Or just be like, like that other one that you talked about where the girl just got like fucking raped by your dad. It's like, Jesus Christ. I don't need my day being ruined over and over like that. I hear, I hear your point and I can't really, um, I'm not going to dismiss it or, or, or argue against it very much, but I'm, I'm I into see that how kind that's, of shit, I guess. I see how that stuff's addictive. I mean, those true crime podcasts are... Those people are making bank. They're buying fucking castles in Scotland. 
Like clearly yeah, telling stories about your life and dick jokes don't pay the bills anymore. So maybe we should pivot. Well, when we first got into this racket, there was a whole bunch of upside and, and riches possible. But I now now that we've been here in the the fart joke and dick joke space for a long time, we're seeing just how much of a grind it is before you actually eat out a profit. I mean, yeah, you I had mean, to lose an entire career for, for <laughs> us to turn any profit. Yeah, like we were one of the first people on site for the gold rush, and we still didn't find any gold nuggets. We were looking no. in the wrong spot. Yeah, we've been digging for five years. This motherfucker just showed up and found a, a boulder of gold. Like, wait, what? Shit! How did we miss that boulder? Fucking Dax Shepard, son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn it. Um, well, speaking of five dickers and movie talk, I did get another email from the butcher of Bakersfield, who, if anybody will remember from a couple episodes ago, wrote in to let us know that he finds Goodfellas, The Godfather, and The Matrix all one dickers. So he wrote back and said, We're going to let this cocksucker ruin two episodes, huh? <laughs> All right, what did the butcher of Baker's fill up to say? Um, the, he's saying that he basically got the response that he expected, but he will not waver. And he said, If you want an actual good gangster movie, you know, not like The Godfather and Goodfellas, you should watch Public Enemies with Johnny Depp. That is five gangster dicks. As far as an action movie goes, it's hard for me to pick one. But my top three are Die Hard, Sicario, and T2. I mean, I can stand behind those recommendations. Wait. That's a Michael Mann film, right? I think we watched it. That came out not too long after this podcast started. I remember reviewing it on this podcast. Nope. This movie came out. Before this podcast started. Did it. Fuck. Oh, man. So we ripped off Public Enemies? So I just completely lied there. All right. We'll edit that part out, Kevin. Please. Nope. Can't do or it. I'm lying. edit out all the parts so I say stuff stupid. Okay. But right, whatever. Just for the record, uh, according to IMDb. It's about John Dillinger, letter- right? Correct. Johnny Depp is John Dillinger. Fair enough. Uh I mean Christian I mean, Bale I think and Johnny of Black Depp. Mass. Yes, yes, you're that definitely. All right, fair enough. Public Enemies is a three point one on Letterboxd and a seven on IMDb. Mm. It's it's a Michael Mann film, right? Yes. Same guy who did Heat. Michael Mann. Yes. That's I mean I, I remember Heat too. Really enjoying. Yeah, crazy, right? So I remember v- being very disappointed because John Dillinger is a story I'm interested in. Um, I thought Johnny Depp would kill it, and Michael Mann has had a lot of success. But I remember he's not also got being some duds. I recently watched yeah, Black Hat sure. on a plane, the hacker movie with Chris Hemsworth. Whoa, holy shit! What a waste of time that was. That was a bad, bad movie. He actually has like a fucking baseball hit rate. Like I, I almost want to say Michael Mann. Like maybe a third of his movies are actually good. Collateral, solid flick. Collateral kicks ass. Yeah, Heat kicks ass. Uh, Public Enemies was not a fan of though. I do think that was one of his duds. And like, I'm not gonna get much into a back and forth. With a motherfucker that said Goodfellas sucks. I mean. <laughs> We're just probably not going to see eye to eye. We'll have yeah. to pick another topic to, to 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 discuss. Yeah, maybe we should discuss the um, abortion debate with Butcher of Bakersfield. Uh, let's see. We've got a little bit of time left. Mount if voicemail. He, if he leaves a fucking abortion voicemail, that's on you, Kevin. It was a that placenta's on your hands. It's fucking. I say it. that word right. Did I say that fucking yeah. Word? yeah. Uh. You know, when it's a fetus? <laughs> Fuck you. you Voicemails, yay! All right, let's talk to some humans. Let's hear some fucking humans! Where? God damn it. What? Ooh. Ah! Ah! 
Yo, what up, MSBH? It's uh, Sean again. I got another with Jeff like a dick. Oh, all right. Got to cue this up proper. Got to do it right. What's up, bitch? It's time to find out what it would take for Jeff Clark to suck a dick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bring me the scenario in the dick. Oh, no. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Uh, I don't... On the border of against the rules where you can't put a gay thing on a gay thing, I don't think it's gay. <laughs> it's just fucked up. Would you rather, Jeff Clark, suck a dick or have sex with a dog? Now, I'm not going to say little mama... That's what I'm thinking. That's... But would you rather fuck a dog or suck a dick? I think it's on the border of uh <laughs> on the border of uh it's not on the border. The game. That, that's <laughs> over the fucking line. Come that on. Is... <laughs> we gotta be fair here, right? I mean I do a good job of answering most of these. That's I don't really have to answer that one, right? No, because we all know you're fucking the dog. No, I would not <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say what I would do. You guys know what I wouldn't do, though. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Sean. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Clean it up. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Move on to the next voicemail. Oh, hold on a second. Hey, guys. Take... Shutty boys all, need... all flustered. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. I had hope until he was hey. like, well... Gay on gay. This isn't technically gay on gay. It's like, all right. Uh oh. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Guys, it's shit balls. Shit I balls. Was, uh, I'm out here driving, delivering packages, and just listened to the last episode, which was had me rolling. But I was, had a uh, would Jeff suck a dick question <laughs> that just came to me, and I was wondering would Jeff suck a dick or every time Shuddy ate one of his boogers? It would teleport into Jeff's mouth. Also, well, I feel like we've done this one before. This sounds familiar. <laughs> I don't know how. I did have a question for Shuddy. I was wondering if Shuddy has a uh, like a booger preference when he eats his boogers. So, like, does he like slimy or does he like the burnt ones? Or I just want to know oh. if he's got a preference when he eats them. You guys are hilarious. See y'all later. Oh. Yeah, I guess boogers do come in all shapes and sizes, like like French fries. Like, do you like waffle cuts? Do you like <laughs> steak fries? Do you like the big ones? Curly fries? They might be the fries, as the, the burger ones. Uh, like, as a reformed booger eater, we're not going to discuss my previous preferences. Oh well man, you did have a preference though. Oh, man, but it's so good that I'm like I'm like hungry. I haven't really eaten much today, so I don't have anything to vomit. But I'm fucking starving. I would have vomited probably if you had to answer that question. Just the thought, just the, the knowing that you had a preference, like my mouth is sweating, like the acid's about to kick in. I mean, look, if they're it's gooey, you might it, as well be eating snot. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that, though. I don't know what that means. No, that's on the low end. That's that would not be a preference. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Oh. <laughs> You're more of a chunky style. I got you. <laughs> um, well, I was actually going to say, My I'm, is pretty so sad. Sure, I'm pretty sure Shuddy has quasi retired from his booger eating days. So I would not suck that dick because I would just risk Shuddy not relapsing very often. Oh, but you would no, know gonna, it. The second he relapsed, you would yeah, know. It. I'd call Shuddy. Shuddy, quit doing that. Quit fucking doing that. <laughs> All right, I get it. You like the burnt ones. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what is going on with your nose tonight? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eh, let's do one more. So, guys. <laughs> is that guy again? I got that my, uh, my girlfriend is making me call you about. I'm not proud of it. 
Um, yeah, specifically? I'm going to start at the beginning. Uh, I have- Man, this guy's like Riley Martin. Hopefully oh. this is a, a sex situation or a poop. Oh. Two of the situations that I think we can speak on. Yeah. Please hit us with your poop questions. Uh, a dog named Sonny. Oh. I call him Sonny Bear. Uh, we were outside. I was smoking cigarettes, smoking some weed, probably. This was like a day or two ago. Uh, and she keeps bugging me to call you about it. Um, oh. So I was out there with my dog, Sonny Bear. Uh, Sonny. Uh. Man, this guy's gonna, like, ASMR. And fucking knock me out. Wait, did you uh, pause it, or is this still in between his sentences? No, I, I paused it. Oh, all right. oh, you see, the Biavians, oh, you motherfuckers. What? Okay, I could have sworn I unpaused it. What is happening? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> technically, uh, but I call him Sunny Bear. I have a dog named Shadow. I call him Shadow Battle or Shadow Bear or... Whatever. I, I do all these kind of nicknames. <clears throat> I'm calling my dog inside. Being like, hey, Sunny Bear, Sunny Bear, Sunny Bear. To come inside. And then I come upstairs. And I believe I was listening to some MSPH while I was downstairs. Uh, outside. And, uh. Oh. And then I was talking to my girlfriend about what was happening during the episode, and I called. Oh, fucking what? My girl thought it was the fuck. Whoops, hold on. What was happening during the episode, and I called Shuddy Boy, Shuddy Bear, and my girl thought it was the funniest thing ever. (laughs) So now, forever and ever, Anytime I'm talking about the podcast, her <laughs> she's always gonna <laughs> think of Shuddy as Shuddy Bear. <laughs> so, that's it. Man, he really came to life at the end there, huh? Whatever. I don't know you <laughs> know why I call for that story. She just kept bugging me about telling you guys, but all right, later Shuddy Bear. It's a cute fucking pet name for you there, Shuddy. I like it. I'm the shuddy bear. I didn't know which way you're gonna go on that. You didn't but, think I was gonna like it? I mean, I think there was a decent chance you wouldn't be into a grown man calling you shuddy bear. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's fine. I think it would be better if there was a naked lady calling you shuddy bear. Oh, one hundred and fifty percent. It'd be even funnier if it was a naked dude calling you shuddy bear. <laughs> funnier, yes. Naked dude with a boner. I mean, if we had an animator on hand that could draw, like, a Care Bear, but make his head all shuddy-ish, and we could have shuddy bear shirts. I would, I would co-sign that. You know how vain I am. I I, I want my face on all of our merch, so. Yeah, if. if, I'm I'm down with with that. How about Dookie Boy the Cocksucker? You want your face on that one? I mean, that's you. Everybody knows that's you, so. Right. <laughs> I tr- my face transcends it. Man, if we if we did have just, you know, big uh, big podcast fame and just tons and tons of merch, Shuddy Boy's background would just be all of his shit. Like, all that He-Man stuff would be gone, and it would just be all Shuddy Boy merch. Oh, I, I got sh- this Shuddy Boy bottle opener. Got, um... Shuddy Boy pens over here sitting in the Shuddy Boy mug. Fucking Shuddy Shrine. Yeah. It's like Krusty the Clown merch. Oh, I got myself this. There sh- is actually a Shuddy Boy mug floating around. It's uh, right next it's to the Shuddy my, Boy home pregnancy test. At my parents' house when I had my own Shuddy Boy merch thing on Cafe Press way, way back in the day. Get some Shuddy Boy chewable Flintstones vitamins. They're all shaped like me. Ooh, this one's shaped like a burnt one. <laughs> Good vitamin B. Shuddy, shuddy, shuddy. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. 
Oh man, that was good. Uh, what happened? Did someone die? Uh-uh. I don't know Kevin's if I should get a reaction to his to his phone to a notification he just got. If you'd like to see Kevin's face, make sure to go to youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour. And don't be thrown off if like it starts in the middle. We just hit record late. <laughs> Sorry, I just got some like really good family news. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah, for a change, somebody didn't die. Let's talk about something else. Shuddy boy, can you go back to your favorite boogers? This is why I put my phone on my bed. I know. I mean, I went. And, I actually went and got it because I wanted to check Instagram. I don't know why. I don't even <laughs> fucking post anything. But. Oops. Shit. One of my homies just tried to FaceTime me. Why? I don't know. To talk about sports. His motherfucker's on vacation with his family. Do you so get like, a lot I'm of FaceTime calls? No, just my one friend does it all the time. I mean, not like he's not FaceTiming me all the time, but he's the only one that I know who does it. And he does it, let's say, once a month. Well, let's try to FaceTime me. But it's, I mean, right, it's well, gloopy. It's one of my best friends. You, I'm not typically you know. a fan of FaceTime. The only reason I FaceTimed you guys while you were in New Orleans was because that's the easiest way to talk to everybody in the room. Yeah, like when my phone rings, it's always like, oh, Jesus, what is happening that couldn't be in a text? And then when it's a FaceTime, it's like, oh, fuck, is the zombie apocalypse starting? What is so urgent that we need to be face to face? See, I figured the FaceTime is never urgent, right? Like that to me is always just like, like whatever. I don't know. It could be even like a pocket dial. That's what I'm thinking most times. Yeah. Yeah, but like if it's super like if the news is super like sad or whatever, I guess it could be good news through FaceTime. But if it's like sad news, people aren't going to really want to show themselves sad. Yeah, I guess you have a point. All right. Well, I might need to do a little bit of clever editing there. So to make up for it, let's do one more voicemail. Shuddy, would you rather suck the dip to completion and swallow the load? Or French kiss my butthole. You come all the way up in my butthole. Which one would you rather do? Bye, guys. Wow. Okay, I can't believe we just unexpectedly got Whoa! graced by a legend pooping Kathy. But she drops a wood shutty suck we a confer- dick? Can we confirm that that is legitimately crapping Catherine? I'll never forget that fucking voice. Yeah. That I, was 100% I'm, her. I'm just... It could you, be... You better take that butthole shutty or I'm I taking mean, it. That's like, are we sure Tom Hanks is doing the voice of Woody? Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty sure that's Tom Hanks. <laughs> Great comp. Yeah, I know. I, I know Tom Hanks's voice just like I know. I don't. This isn't Kathy. my game. This is this is a Jeff game. I don't like being in this hot seat. But of course, she's of she's course testing I'm your loyalty. That butthole. <laughs> Man, I'm, no questions I'm about Shelly's loyalty. I'm, I'm tongue in that bung. I'm that's, taking seconds. That's a dangerous move, Shuddy boy. Like you could you could be met with some. Uh, some projectiles. Know, some shrap metal. <coughs> That'd be a bad outcome. I'd hate for you to get hit with shrap metal. I wonder if pooping Kathy is into bung tonguing. Not every woman is. But she is very butt oriented. I know she retired from calling into the voicemail line and exploding diarrhea all over the place, but I mean she's the one that just put it on the table. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like Tongue, tongue to hurt my starfish. Okay, How old is bye. that? Vo- when is that oil? When is that voicemail from? Uh, that oil is from two months ago. We've officially crossed into June, which is sweet. Right as we officially crossed into August, she hasn't got heard it yet, or if she thought we just skipped over it. I think she knows the ordeal we're we're currently in with Mount Voicemail. She needs to understand we would never, ever, ever skip over her voicemail. That would no, never happen. Absolutely not. No, and that, like. People just keep, like we've called. I've stopped giving giving out the voicemail line. <laughs> like, ask for people to chill out, 
and it just keeps piling up. Like we are never going to catch up unless we do an all voicemail episode. And I don't think I want to do that. I hate that idea. Yeah. I really like that idea, but because this is a democracy, I am outvoted. I really want to hear 2022 voicemails in 2023. That's where I'm hoping we get to. We're on course for that happening. Um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it. I think I've, I've consulted the rundown, Shuddy, and we've reached the end of it. That's fair. We covered a lot of topics, though. I thought we did a pretty good job this episode. Yep. Our work here is done. But it actually isn't, because we have to go do a whole other show. And if you want to hear it, first of the month, great time to jump on. Patreon.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. Check us out. We do uh, a mini podcast every week after the main one. And then, you know, Crafter Jeff going strong. People still loving it. We're, I don't know, what do you say, about halfway through the season? I'd say less, right? Or, yeah, less than halfway. What is our 15 left or 14 left? Around there, so yeah. So you got to think they'll cut down to the final three, maybe four. So Well, yeah, and then at some point they're going to start hitting us with double episodes. Uh, okay. Well, Because that happened last time. So the next episode is episode 10. So I would say we're probably halfway or right around there. Yeah. So that those two are on the $5 tier, and then the $10 tier has our other specialty shows, like What the Fuck Did I Just Watch? Jeff's been dropping Snack Attacks and Between Two Flushes. I'm going to attempt to do a nerd hole, even though I have my fucked up thumb. I think I'm going to be able... There's a few things I might be able to pull off, so... Did you get one of those 3D printed things so you could just use your left hand? I didn't. I can't, um, I can't relearn how to play video games at this point in my life. You should be able to do like regular Nintendo games. Yeah, I think I can. Do you guys remember like when you were kids, you had like one friend who played Nintendo like a fucking jerk off. And instead of like holding it and playing the buttons with their thumbs, they like held it flat and typed on it like it was a keyboard. I used, so I was, I used the, the joystick controller almost exclusively with my NES. Wow. The big, the, you know, the, I don't even, it had a name. You've always, you've always had a thing for flair, Shuddy. <laughs> I don't have anyone's like, I don't have the specific friend's name off the top of my head, but I think I remember someone playing like in a weird way. I only, I played exclusively with the power glove. <laughs> the NES no. Van- Advantage joystick you, that it was gray and about that big and had two big buttons. Oh yeah. That thing was sick. Yeah, I that I that was my controller of choice for my NES. I didn't like the once I got that, I hated the handheld controllers. You know what I just realized? I don't think I've ever played with a controller that wasn't included in the original box. You never got like, an I've aftermarket never, one? Never purchased one. How did you have enough controllers for you and your brothers to play? Well, NES days. Okay, so I have to be lying. You, you okay, so to... I have to be lying. But the the controllers that we always purchased were just like your standard controllers, right? You never bought the off brand. You never, never had a Mad off, Cats never, controller that never like a for collectible. Three never like and then would crap out. Nothing. No, no arcade controllers. No, nothing like that. It's just been your standard controller in the box. And if we needed a third for a cheat, we would just buy a standard controller. Let Cheech use the broken one and think he was playing. <laughs> I would straight just unplug that shit right out of the fucking Super Nintendo and just like lie to him and tell him that he was playing. <laughs> that to both Cheech and Bill. Yeah, I mean, that was the, always the move with younger siblings. And that was the move with both of the boys when they were little and they wanted to play. And it was so much easier with, with the boys with shit being wireless. Like, it didn't oh, have yeah. to look like they were plugged in. You just hand them a controller that's not turned on probably without batteries in it and just let them think that they were doing it so yeah if you want to hear more controller talk <laughs> patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour i thought it was pretty good parenting tips good job yeah, you know, we're just you know doing our best to make this the worthwhile show for everyone kevin sorry yeah it's a real potpourri of podcast topics oh now you want to go and say things correctly <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Potpourri. 
took me a while to. Nah, never mind. I'm not gonna do it. YouTube, youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour, mad scientist party hour at gmail.com. If you want to shoot us some emails, if you have, uh, if you're listening through some sort of platform that allows subscribing, liking, and reviewing, every little bit helps. Yeah, do some of that for us. Yeah, toss us some courtesy reviews, please, and thank you. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, I'm at Kevin Craft, at Shuddy Boy, at Jeffro Records, and at MSPH Podcast on both Twitter and Instagram. And thank you. Thank you for being a part of the Puminati and listening and supporting us. And uh, Shuddy Boy will tongue dart your butthole, regardless of how much poop flies out of it. But until next time... I don't know that's what we can take away from that. Something! <laughs>